gas laws. I'm going to talk about gas laws to continue the discussion in class. And just as a quick review, let's look at the three states of matter that we talk about most often. Okay, we've got gases. Okay, gases, the molecules are far apart. Now remember, this is all relative to the other states of matter. The gas particles move freely and they fill up all the available space. It is important that you note these things and that you remember them. Okay, for the next state of matter, liquids, okay, molecules are close together, but they move around one another, meaning there are some um, actually attractive forces that keep these together, but not enough to stop that movement. Okay, and remember, if I was going to draw um, movement, I can either use like the little swoosh or an arrow. And then here, using arrows with like curly things is to represent that they're kind of moving over each other. And then the last state of matter would be the solid state of matter. Again, molecules are close together. Look at how close they are in this picture and in this. They're about the same distance. Okay. Here, though, in a solid, the molecules are together in a regular array, array <clears throat> meaning a regular pattern. The um, forces holding these molecules or these particles together are so strong that the particles are not able to move around each other. And remember that even though they are solid and they're kind of locked in place, there is still some motion because there is some kinetic energy, so it's, they just vibrate in place, but they do not move around one another. Okay. Now, we've talked in class and we saw some examples about gases, and we've talked about these um, being represented by small particles or circles. These um, points listed here, particularly the first uh, 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 these kind of these first six. Okay, This one is kind of implied in another one, but I'm jumping ahead of myself. All right. These are the points of the um, essentially the KMT or kinetic molecular theory. And you want to make sure that you get these points down and that you remember these points. I didn't spell molecular. It's an A. Jeez. Molecular theory. Okay. So gases consist of these small particles. These small particles move rapidly in straight lines. <coughs> They have no attractive or repulsive forces. So these particles, when I drew them in class like this, okay, or bouncing off walls, they are said to move in straight lines, and they really aren't affected by other gas particles around them, at least in theory. Relatively, the gas particles are very far apart. The volume that this particle takes up, this next point, the volume is very small compared to the volume of the container they occupy. Okay. They also have kinetic energies that increase with an increase in temperature. Now, this last point, and please pause the, the screencast if you need to to get all these points down. This last point, gases being compressible, really relate back to this point. So to me, these two are kind of the same. So let's remember these first. Uh, how many? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five points of the kinetic molecular theory that you need to remember. Now, we're going to get into discussions about the gases and how we can uh, put numbers to some of these things and see exactly how some of the properties of gases change depending on what parameter we change. All right, and the things we're really going to focus on, at least initially, is going to be this pressure, volume, and temperature. We are going to be looking at this amount, um, but it's going to be a little later. All right, so pressure, you represent pressure with a capital 
capital P as a symbol, volume capital V, temperature capital T. This amount, represented by an N, is going to represent something which is the number of moles. You don't need to know that at this point. You will know it um, shortly, All right, this concept of a moles, but it's really the amount of particles is what you can think of for that. But we are going to be looking at pressure, volume, and temperature, how it relates to each other in terms of gases. If we're going to be talking about pressure, we're going to need to know some units. We need to know atmospheres, millimeters of mercury. You should be familiar with inches of mercury because a lot of times when they talk about atmospheric pressure on the news, they talk about inches of mercury. Pounds per square inch is useful to know pascals and kilopascals. Um, you should know these. The important thing to note is the symbol of these four and how they are related to each other. And one atmosphere is taken to be an exact number. This one atmosphere is the same thing, same quantity, as 660 millimeters of mercury. Tor is an old unit. It really just means millimeters of mercury. We have pounds per square inch that you may have heard in the United States. And then we have kilopascals, 101,325 pascals in one atmosphere. 101,325 pascals in 760 millimeters mercury. All those things are equivalent. Those are the four that you need to know. Atmospheric pressure, just to remind you of the discussion in class, it is the pressure exerted by a column of air at the top of the atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. At sea level, it is about one atmosphere or a little less. You need to know this definition. You need to be familiar with the concept that it really is that column of air that kind of presses down from the top of the atmosphere to the surface of the Earth. And it's the weight and the mass of those gas molecules that form that pressure. One thing I should have said if we go back to the pressure, ah, it is written here. Pressure, again, is defined as a force acting on a specific area. And as discussed in class again, the higher I go, that less column, so I have less atmospheric pressure, say Denver, compared to Downingtown. Downingtown, lower in sea level, that column of air is much greater. I have that weight pressing down on that unit area. The atmospheric pressure is much higher. Talk about a barometer, either in the next screencast or in class.